Man, every time I come back to this game, it's just such a joy to play. It is so extremely well done. The game is called No Plan B, and right now you're joining me in the last mission in the first chapter of my campaign. And my boy Fodder here is about to attempt a solo clearance of this compound. If he dies, my campaign ends. I have no alternative routes. The only other operator I have is incapacitated right now. And that's kind of the whole deal about this game. It is called No Plan B for a reason. There really is no plan B. There's high consequences in the campaign. And let me just kind of explain how I got here and what the game is all about. So No Plan B is a tactical top-down one-time planning game where you are given a procedurally generated mission and you can select from several different missions in your campaign. You have to choose which path you want to go down. You select that mission. That mission is procedurally generated and then you are given a specific amount of time that you have to plan it. In the case of the mission I'm on now, I have one minute and 30 seconds and you go step by step, room by room, muzzle aim point by muzzle aim point, flashbang by flashbang, bang, objective by objective, and just take down these buildings and you plan it all out in this big kind of rehearsal space. And if I come out here, you see I'm in this like warehouse environment. And so this isn't even the real mission environment. This is kind of our rehearsal and planning area. And after you're satisfied with your plan and you've traced out every little movement at what speed people are moving, where their muzzles are oriented the entire time, when they're crouching, when they're standing, how they open doors, do they open them, do they breach them, do they shotgun them, whatever the case may be, you have an infinite amount of options and you have to go and take down this building. And that was all going well and good, and I was having a great time playing this campaign. First mission went really well, and uh, you know we accomplished our objective, didn't take any damage, and I was just on a roll. Second mission, well, it was a bit, little bit rough. I died, you know, the uh, the pairs operator who I, who I made after myself, uh, got caught in a fatal funnel and got blasted, didn't go my way. Fodder here is taking a lot of damage. You can see his health here on the bottom. He only has about 25% health left. And if I get through this last mission, then my other operator comes back, fodder, gets a little speed buff, maybe we get a couple new recruits, we get to unlock some new weapons, unlock some new attachments, uh, upgrade our soldiers, get some new kit, maybe get some cosmetic stuff, and just uh, continue our progress. But if fodder fails in this mission, well, the game ends and maybe so too does this video. So what we have done here is stacked the odds in our favor. So if we look at this rehearsal space, I've got to get my EOD technician, this bomb squad looking dude over here, all the way to this green space here in the back. There's a bomb there in the actual mission area that we are charged with moving to and defusing. And I've elected to do some very deliberate, limited penetration style solo CQB, just really kind of dangerous and suicidal, to be honest with you, uh, and pick this place apart with fodder on point and the EOD tech following in trail, kind of one room behind throughout. And what we've done to stack the odds in our favor, I brought two flashbangs. Those are both being employed. I'll show you guys the plan here in just one second. Um, and I've also added a, I've done an initial map scan. So I've taken a 10% penalty for that on my final score, but I have an idea now of where the bad guys are located. Um, and then I've also added tear gas to the environment, which, you know, debuffs me and my movement speed, and my rotation speed. I accept those debuffs because I'm going solo and I'm moving really slow anyway. But because that, you know, it also affects the enemy, it decreases their view angle, their uh, field of view whenever they're static and moving, as well as their accuracy. I think most importantly, perhaps, for this one is deafening strike. It reduces their sound perception by 60%. I've elected a selective clearance where I'm not going to hit either of these bad guys over here, the one who I think is probably in this hallway or the one that's um, over here in this room, because I just can't take that much damage. So instead, I'm going to go clearance over here to the right and um, basically pull security this direction, hoping that we don't get pushed, basically. Or if we do get pushed, I got a gun on it. So that's the way we're doing. We're going to selectively clear here on the bottom side. So the deafening strike perk is going to help me there, but I've taken a 20% debuff to my final score. And then we're doing a night raid. So this is reducing my view angle a little bit, uh, but it's also reducing the enemy's vision ridge to 10 meters because they don't have nods, or as my boy Fod here has quad tubes, and we also have a 25% increased reaction speed to enemies. This is what the plan looks like. Again, it's a very, you know, slow and deliberate clearance, very high risk. I frankly don't know if we're going to survive this, but this is kind of what it looks like. And as soon as we're done previewing it here, we'll go over into the mission environment, watch it through together live and find out whether or not my campaign is going to continue or whether it ends before the video even gets started. So Fod pies off the first room. We go in quiet. I elect to save the bank so far. This is an open threshold here, so he goes straight into another pie on that open threshold. We're choosing this route because uh, that open threshold. Ignoring this door for now. Pull a little bit of security on it. 
move the EOD tech up, get a bang down this hallway. Also a civilian somewhere in this area. We're going to tag this bad guy. Hopefully he is stunned when we get here. We've now thrown a bang. So we are loud. We're hoping that deafening strike perk gets us through undetected. This door comes open. Bang goes in. We do another deliberate pie or pan of that door. Immediately check our left corner. Pie off the dead space behind the tire. And then pull rear security as our EOD tech, EOD tech comes in and disarms the bomb. And so that's the plan. We'll see uh, how it goes. And guys, if you're interested in this game, I've played it before. I've played it in early access. And as this video goes live, so too does No Plan B go live in its final form on the Steam store. The game has come a hell of a long way since I have last played it. And you guys can grab a copy of it off of my game store over at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming or pick up a copy over on Steam. If you don't have the cash right now, you want to enter into a chance to get it for free. I'm giving away four copies of it over on my Discord server. The Discord link is in the description below. And if you join me on Discord, just go into the giveaways channel and you can enter to win a copy of this game there. Good luck to all of you who do that. And thanks for swinging by Discord. You'll meet some good folks over there and have a great time doing it. All right. We're now in the actual mission environment. <laughs> And I hope this goes well, because I've just talked to my microphone in my room by myself for seven minutes, and it's totally possible that that is time wasted if this plan goes out the window. Um, typically for these first kind of looks at these things, I like to just get a nice overhead view and follow the operator all the way through the environment. I have no idea how this is going to go, boys. I hope that our boy Fodder can pull it off. Let's get a good look at Fodder down here. One of the things you can do in this game is really customize kit. I've, uh, he's my shotgun breacher guy, which is unfortunate given the current situation because I could use a little uh, better DPS despite that heavy hitting nature of that shotgun. But you can see I've actually put shotgun rounds on his front rack. He's got two bangs. I've equipped him with, all, well, all the operators in my squad, I've got these back panels with bangers or frag pouches. I've kind of LARPed it out a little bit, tried to make it, you know, as authentic as possible. All right, I'm nervous. Here we go, boys. I'm just going to send it. I'm just going to do it. Let's go. First door comes open. Come on, fodder. Bad guy, he's down. I don't think there's another one in this room, but there could be. Okay, room's looking good. I don't see a response from any other rooms. I'm worried about this door in this next room, the one at the top of the screen. We're pying, pying, pying the one. Okay, good. That deafening strike perk seems to be working because that person did not respond to the, uh, the noise that we made in the first room despite that open door. This door comes open. Bang goes in. Civilian seems okay. I don't think we damaged the civilian. Bad guy's dead. That's good. This room's going to be the most squirrely, obviously. I have no idea where the bad guy might be in this room. There it is. Yep, one. Left corner's tight. There's some dead space behind the center stack. Dead space looks good. Fodder's going to turn around, pull security on that door. Let's go. I think we made it. Bombs defused. Let's go. All right, so the perks crushed us. We lost 65% of our total score, and we actually did a teeny bit of damage to that civilian because we're shooting shotgun. You know, it is what it is. Uh, that was minus 1,000 points. But the big news here is we survived the mission. And something you can also do in this game that you guys have already seen very likely um, from the intro that I did while I was running my mouth was you can make really badass cinematic replays. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now, despite Fodder's epic performance, because uh, I want to get on to what comes next. So if we exit this mission and continue our campaign, because we didn't die, um, we have unlocked some new game modes as well. We've unlocked skirmish mode for the SWAT faction. Outstanding. The SWAT faction, of course, the good guys. You can also play as the bad guys, believe it or not. And we've unlocked the challenge missions for the SWAT faction. And we've unlocked the mission generator for the SWAT faction. That's a pretty awesome feature as well because you can just play over and over again. It'll generate an endless number of uh, randomly and procedurally generated missions. And we can now build our own custom missions as well. Fodder improved his shotgun specialist. Pairs was incapacitated. Oh, shit. Fod's only up to 43%. Oh, he's been fully healed. Okay. Because he we finished that chapter. Um... I was incapacitated, but I'm back on my feet. We've unlocked the site attachment for the Mega 90, and we can recruit a new character. All right, new recruit. Who do we want? Um, I've already got an assaulter that's pairs, and I've got a breacher that's fodder. This guy's elusive. This is a medic. That's probably where we got to go. 
I think I'm going to recruit John as a medic, and he's also fast. Because that medic's going to give us more endurance, because um, the medic perk here, 5% squad health recovery between campaign missions is huge, especially as the missions get more challenging and the uh, chapters get longer. Um, so we'll recruit John. All right. Chapter two is unlocked. We have a hell long way to go. I want to show you guys what this looks like as I just dive straight into chapter two. So once I'm in chapter two, you can see how the campaign is laid out here. We only have one option to start off. That screams return. But then we have to make some decisions based off how this goes. We can go up here, unlock an upgraded MP7 machine gun. We can go down here and unlock an additional grenade. We can go to here afterwards. So, you know, you get these forks in the road and then you have to make a decision. Do you jump straight to night's end because maybe your force is depleted and you're worried that taking on another mission is just too high risk. So you got to make a choice. Go down here. You can unlock an additional handgun. Uh, and then here at the end, we'll unlock an additional shotgun. We, our only option right now is Scream's Return. And remember, guys, let's say I go down here to Manic King and I fail. And, uh, you know, I, I don't accomplish the mission. Maybe no one on my you know squad dies, but I don't accomplish the mission. This will become unplayable. We failed. And then we have to go up here to pre-slap. If we pass pre-slap, we can continue moving. If we fail pre-slap, it's game over. There's no redos, no try agains. That campaign is done. And so is your squad. So high stakes throughout. Step one, though, I've got to pass this guy. And if I don't pass this, then, uh, you know, I don't continue either. And now that we have a new recruit, we've got to make him look the part. So you can see that um, fodder and pears here. Both are looking nice and hot. This individual, less so. We'll get John in the fight in just a second. Let's customize John right now. So we're going to customize the agent. Actually, let's go back and do it this way. Here is pairs. Let's customize the agent here. I'm going to apply this to all. So now when I come over here to John, he's now looking the part. I need to customize him. Um, who should we name John after? G-Man's not here, but we like gaming with G-Man. So we're going to make... John is now G-Man. Congratulations, G-Man. You are the team medic. What does a medic carry? So the left arm patch, I don't think I have. There's no G-Man patch in here. I don't think there's a medic patch either. Oh, there's a medic patch, sort of. All right, so he's going to get that on one side, and he's going to get a happy face on the other side. Because that's G-Man's style. You know, he's a happy guy. All right, up front, um, he's got an admin pouch, mag pouches, radios now. That's very much my setup. And I think that's probably fine for a medic on his back. Uh, he wouldn't have two radios necessarily. So let's go front, left, pouch. That's that guy. Left, side, pouch. All right, here we go. Do we have any more admin options? There we go. That's looking medic-y. In right side pouch. There we go. We've got some aid kits up front. The rest looks about fine. It's fine. We'll save that. We have a scar now, so we need to definitely uh, address that. And then we're going to give G-Man the MP7. We're going to customize that weapon. G-Man gets a... We're going to give him 5% vision range, 10% enemy accuracy debuff by adding a light, which I think is pretty cool. You can see on here, there's plenty of customization options. As you begin to level up and unlock weapons, you've got a little aim point, an EOTech, a reflex side, an ACOG, and all the guns have different uh, customization options. You can even paint them and make them your very own. It's quite nice. Fodder right now has two bangs. I'm gonna take one of those off and I'm gonna give that bang to pairs. I think, obviously, it's a shotgun, so it makes the most sense to either go EOTech or Red Dot. I think I'm going to go aiming speed. It's been effective at the ranges. We need it, too, so far as accuracy is concerned, especially with that long barrel, so I don't have any major concerns there. And then I have a skill point to use here. We'll go ahead and level up Door Smasher. Everything else is looking good. All right, I think the crew is good to go. Let's take a look at this mission. Um... Our objective here is to retrieve as much intel as possible. So this is an infiltration operation. We have zero of eight agents deployed. So we've got three dudes available. Everybody's healthy though, so that's a win. Uh, we have a entry option here, some external windows. This door's 
off limits, blocked, barricaded, locked. I don't have the mechanisms to get through it right now. And then I have never played this game mode type. I don't know if I need to end the round with a dude in each one of these areas or if I just need to touch them. That is something I am curious about, but I guess we will find out. So we've got one entry point. It's here. We got a corner fed room with a short wall on the right. Some dead space in the center. Big corridor hallway. Very dangerous because you have an opposing door that's open. So I got to keep that in mind. Uh, that's going to be a three-man clear for sure. That's tough. That's really, really, really tough, actually. Um, that connects back here. And there's also some obstructed areas back here. Additional hallway. Short room. This room's a long room. Corner fed again. Odd shape. Tough three-man entry. But clearable from external. I have three minutes to accomplish this. And I intend to use them. I, I may have... Um, G-Man work external with the sub gun and do a two-man clear internal. I think that's the move. Let's just get to it. I'm going to get playing in here. my dudes kind of an unorthodox plan here but you got to do what you got to do when you got three dudes in a giant structure to clear with two objectives here's what we've got going on so i've got g-man working the external he's basically pying off these windows in conjunction with dynamic or um deliberate entries from the assault element which is pairs and fodder here's what that looks like up front the door comes open right as g-man comes around the corner pying he pies from external clears and that makes way for the first entry. We take left and right. Don't bother to go all the way to our points of domination in this giant open room because we'll be able to clear most of it from external. Once they are stacked on the next room, G-Man scoots down, starts pying off just a little bit of this big open hallway. Now this is very, very dangerous because we've got an open threshold into a giant open space over here. To mitigate some of that, we're doing two things. One, we're gonna pie from down here. Two, we're gonna put a bang right here in this threshold. So if there is anybody really close right here, they should be affected by that bang. Uh, and then the last thing is we're going to get right out of that fatal funnel as fast as possible and clear the rest of this room. So Moving. bang goes out. Pi just concluded on that first door right there. Right there. There's that first pi. Bangs out. Bangs going. And then there is that second pi. So we're getting good long coverage into the dead space behind these tires. We've cleared that fatal funnel from this adjacent room that is already open. Uh, there's significant risk of crossfire throughout this operation with this dude on the outside if we're shooting, you know, particularly with the assault rifle. I'm not as worried about the shotgun unless he's shooting slugs. Um, but there's some risk of overpenetration, and we've done what we can to work the geometries, but it's also just, you know, a game, and you got to play the game. And I think the best way to win this level is by using those external windows. So clear the threshold, clearing around the outside, In position. working this open threshold first. And, you know, logic would typically say that because this is open, because we've already made noise, because we've already put a bang in the threshold, we need to go ahead and clear it. Um, it's difficult for me to set conditions to clear it because as you can see, I've got to get G-Man all the way around to the other side to this window to help us get in there. And I've also got a mission objective over here. So I incur some risk here. It's just a, you know, it's a decision that I had to make. Got fodder holding the door, have pairs holding the door. Fodder's gonna fall off, maintain rear security right there. And then he's gonna flip trust pairs to hold his rear security. And he's going to work this door in conjunction with G-Man Pine from Long. This is a huge risk of crossfire. I've mitigated some of it by offsetting in time the pie from the rear, the bang from the front, and then the final clearance from the front. Here's what that looks like. Bang goes in. As that bang goes in, that sets conditions for G-Man to pie from external. He's going to send those rounds. And he's shooting like a little MP7 equivalent. So those things can absolutely rip through these walls. Let's hope he doesn't have to shoot anybody right there. Uh, so that pie concludes. Once that pie is done, Moving. fodder goes ahead, gets inside, touches the objective area, and then G-Man repositions on the other side of the structure for our next entry. This one 
you know, another very dangerous one because we've already been compromised. We've already put a bang in the breach over here. And we've got an external pie going from G-Man. Same kind of thing. I'm doing it all simultaneously this time. This is our biggest point of risk right here. If G-Man sees somebody, he's very obviously well within the SDZs, well inside sectors of fire for the entry team. Uh, but that's a risk that I'm incurring to get this level accomplished and hopefully not damage my guys in the process. He clears that angle relatively quickly. As you can see, his muzzle sweep into the left as we're coming through this door. He's going to be looking a little bit deeper back here so that these guys can deal with immediate threats up front. They go in left, right, points of domination, corners, center. And then I end up holding pairs into the center of the room over here. G-Man's pulling long watching this entry. I'm putting the assault rifle over here also um, in that same location. So now you can see we've got a nice sector fire there, interlocking sector fire there, and we've got fodder going close with the shotgun. He's going to hold short, and then we're going to do, this is another kind of those squirrely ones. Now we have to take this hallway. We have two threat spaces, one open threshold here, one open threshold here into a deep short room. Fodder is going to pull wingman for pairs. Pairs is going to come long, pie this, and basically run the rabbit solo to clear this room by himself. Not a great look. And guys, I keep saying pairs. I I'm talking about the video game character, not myself. I know it's weird. Sorry. Uh, and then Fodder is going to pull wingman for him long down this hallway and then provide cover from this threshold. This is what that looks like. You have one and two man approaching. The AR goes long in conjunction with wingman who's protecting his right flanks. We have both those areas covered. This is not ideal. This is extremely high risk. If I had more bangs, I'd be throwing him all over the place, but we got to do what we got to do. Fodder holds long down the hallway. We clear that room and then come back, push long. Last one here, since we are compromised, we're going to go ahead and run the rabbit. Uh, pairs with the AR is going to come long and quite literally run rather than fire deep into this room. He'll transition to a walk somewhere over here. Uh, which will allow him to get his gun up fodder simultaneously he's going to take this corner and pop anybody with a shotgun who's in this area this is what that looks like shotgun comes around the rabbit is running drawing the enemy's fire in this direction and remember paris has that tank perk and he's also uh running which makes him harder to hit and he's drawn their fire that way so fod with the 12 gauge up close is able to take that final shot the last thing we need to do here is touch the objective area so i'm gonna have pairs right here and then I'm going to have fodder. Who's faster? Yeah, it's probably, this is probably fastest. And I'm going to have fodder run all the way back because I'm not sure how this game mechanic works. All right, while fodder is running over to this objective, I'm actually going to have G-Man do the same thing just because I don't know exactly how this mechanic works. And I would hate to fail the mission and get the campaign deleted because I didn't have somebody on a cap point that they were supposed to be on. So that's the plan. I'm sticking to it. Let's see how it goes. Lord help us. Oh, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Please don't suck. As you can see, we've moved from that rehearsal space into this mission environment. We're going to watch this one go down just like we did the last one. <laughs> see how it goes, man. Uh, all right. Cinematic mode on. We have laptops there. We have laptops there. Everything else seems to be in order. And you know what? For this one, let's get wild and let's crank the music up. Because the music's kind of bitching, if I'm being honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Here we go. X cube. That actually worked. Worked well. Good external clearance. Nice deliberate clearance of the actual building or the room. This longer one's going to be tougher for this SMG. One long, popped him, good bang. Good external security, almost crossfire there, but I think we're okay. This door's open, that makes things more complicated now. Clear from external, good. G-Man's repositioning around the building. All right, we touched that objective. We're gonna be going back there at the end. External clearance is about to go now. G-Man's pieing. Good, I think we may have taken one hit there. External clearance, again, very helpful from G-Man. I don't know why this bathroom has a bathtub right in the middle and in the corner. All right. 
This move is kind of sketchy. Good. There we go. Ooh. Okay. The level is clear. We got one on site. We got G-Man and Fodder coming back around. And that is a mission accomplished, my boys. That is a mission accomplished. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit one of those cinematic replays and show you guys how that system works, or at least what the output of it looks like. We took 267 damage. Ooh, so that was negative 1,000. Accuracy was 90%. Time left, 351, so that's a big bonus. Objective secures 4,000. Overall score, 4984. I'm going to edit up this replay and uh, show that to you guys at the end. You guys will be able to check out that replay right at the end of this video. All we have to do now is exit the mission and collect the goods. So when you finish the mission, you get a full roll-up of how everybody returned. Uh, we have Fodder who got an additional skill point. He also healed by 20% despite being injured by 41%. Pairs took 39% damage but also healed by 20%. Those are perks from G-Man's medic uh, perk, which is pretty nice. Then we unlocked a left light attachment for the BBD7. I think that's the SMG. And we gained a new assault rifle so we can run with two scars now rather than just the one. What do we choose? Oh, we're going to get the piece four all day, boys. We got an M4. Yeah, for sure. G36 can't do it. Any bullpup can't do it. And then next on the list would be to choose what we do next, whether or not we pursue this SMG mission, whether or not we go down and get another bang. That just changes your inventory and what's available to you each mission. As you guys can see, there's a lot going on in this game. I have showed you only a fraction. It is just insanely fun and also extremely difficult and high consequence, which is things that I really appreciate. If you guys did enjoy the video, I'd encourage you to show the love by simply liking the video or subscribing to the channel. Of course, if you want to grab a copy of No Plan B, you can do it on Steam or at my game store where I'll earn a, like, I don't know, a dollar or two. If you guys do it and you'll get a Steam code that you can immediately go and redeem. The full version, version 1.0 of No Plan B launches today, right now. Go play it. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I'm Controlled Pairs, and this has been No Plan B. I'll see you next time.